الله الكبير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم كالصراط الذين أنت عليهم غير المغبوب عليهم من الله الله الكبير We are truly indebted to God for giving us this opportunity and again this is not by accident, this is by divine design and providence that we are here and we are privileged to do this and to be uh, commemorating God and praise Him and extol His name and, and so we are in this unique position that God has put us in and at this time, at this, at this um, position, at this uh, coordinate system in in space time that we are in and this is unique to us and nobody else and so every one of us also has a unique position within this position and so it's it's a huge privilege from him and so we should be grateful to him and again he has entrusted us with the bigger universe and uh, and so that, that our forefathers didn't have the opportunity and so he has given us and and uh, and entrusted us with this uh, huge blessing today. So we should be, we should be grateful, and we should be uh, um, making sure that we understand that this is this is a privilege that God has given us, and so this is an honor that is bestowed upon us. And so we should uh, we should make sure that we are grateful to the source of all of these blessings that we have. <clears throat> uh, again, uh, gratefulness and appreciativeness is a godlike quality. And so we should follow his path, which is the only path that can take us to him. And there are no other paths in the world. This is it. This is, this is what is the path of God, which is, uh, we should keep that in mind and, and, uh, and go through the understanding and the knowledge that, that God has given us and, and understand it and, and fulfill our duties to God. Uh, <clears throat> what I wanted to discuss with you today, I wanted to, Go to this, to this, oops, this verse in, in chapter. This is a chapter twenty one verse thirty. This is what this is. This verse is. Um, and then God says, "If all the trees on the land were pens, and the sea was ink augmented by seven more seas on top of it, God's word would 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 not run out. Indeed, God is Almighty, all wise." And so this is this is this is a huge statement. Again, we have to put this thing in context. When God says sea, he's not talking about the Pacific Ocean. Not to us at least. He may be talking to to the people a thousand years ago or our forefathers that didn't have the knowledge. So those people may have understood it as such. Okay? And so God says it's augmented by seven more seas. On top of it, so pour all this ink into the sea, and and multiply by seven, and so God says now God's word will not run out. Indeed, God is Almighty, all wise. To us, this has a completely different meaning, and we have to use our brains. Okay, so I warn people that that if you do not use your brain, you are going to regress you are going to go backwards. The stuff that you have learned, that we all have learned due to God's generosity and magnanimity, it's going to go away. We are going to go into the times of ignorance. At a time that we were ignorant of these facts. We didn't understand it. We didn't pay attention. We, what we, we read these verses. Today, I have a lot more knowledge than Abraham did. I have a lot more knowledge than my parents did. I have a lot more knowledge than people who lived here 100 years ago did. It's a completely different universe. Okay? So, we go to this and then click on this. This is a NASA website. And God is talking about ocean worlds. Not just the Earth. Ocean worlds. Pay attention to this. Okay? So, you scroll down here. This is the blue planet. Our blue planet, beautiful. Okay, it shows right here. It's hanging out there in space. And so, 
going here and so first thing that we see it says Orion Nebula from Hubble and Spitzer telescopes okay you see this here this is the Orion Nebula Okay, and so we read the caption here. It says, water molecules exist in the Orion Nebula and are still forming today as we speak. It's increasing. The water molecules are increasing. Remember we talked about this, that this is expanding, that God's, God's kingdom is expanding. Okay. The nebula is composed mostly of hydrogen gas. Other molecules are comparatively rare. Even so, the nebula is so vast that it creates enough water every day to fit, to fit Earth's oceans 60 times over. Can you imagine that? Okay. This is what God is talking about when he's talking about us today. We have to understand this. If we cannot understand this, we are going to regress. We are going to make some kind of excuses, or some kind of excuse, okay, not to learn anymore. We don't need to read the whole We want to read that translation. That's what we want to do. We want to do this and this and this and this. And they are closing their eyes to the physical and scientific facts. Now, today when we read this, what do we think of God today? Do we have less respect for God or more respect for God? When I read this verse here, this verse has a completely different meaning to me. It shows the greatness of God, which is growing in front of me every day. And that's what God is saying here. Okay. That's what God is saying here. It doesn't matter. Okay. The words of God will never run out. Okay. So what are these words? Think about it. How many languages, languages are spoken here on this planet? Do you know? I don't know, including dialects and everything. Okay. How many languages are different animals are speaking? Okay, we'll go to 2716. There it is. And Solomon was David's heir. And he said, O oh, people, we have been taught the language of the birds and are endowed with all kinds of things. Indeed, indeed this is a clear tongue. So God, God taught Solomon the language of birds. He also understood what the ants were talking about. This surah is called ant, the ant. Okay. Can you imagine the number of words God that he uses, that he actually teaches his creation? When he talked to the angels, what language were they talking about? Do you know the language? What language they're talking about? When he spoke to the to the his creation when he talks to every individual particle. Do you know what language he's using? Do you know what words he's using? Your mind is just about to blow up. Those are the words of God. We have really no understanding. We go through these verses over and over and we get tired and we drop out. See, we had enough of this. 
don't want to talk about these things. We want to talk about politics. Let's talk about today's situation. If if this thing is going to pass or that thing is going to pass, how about this right and that right and all kinds of stuff. We do not care to glorify and, and extol God. That's the only way you can get ahead. Those other things are not going to get you anywhere, my friends. They are, you are going to regress. You are going to go backwards. Remember in chapter 48, they had the pride of the day of ignorance in their heart. That's what they wanted to go back to. They wanted to go to the days of ignorance. They didn't want the knowledge. They didn't want the wisdom. And we are running into the same problem. We don't want the new knowledge. We don't want to look at these physical and scientific facts. We don't want to look at mathematical facts. We don't want to look at them. We are tired of it. We already know this stuff. Stop telling us about this. This is going to follow you no matter what. It's a fact. Can you imagine this? I mean, when God talks about his words, then they are trying to put words in God's mouth. They are resorting to hadith and this and the others to complete God's words. God who's saying that if you do all of these things, he's not going to run out. Can you imagine that? Okay. And so, to go back to those pictures there, it has a narration of all of this stuff. This is, this is absolutely amazing, okay? Okay. This is the Orion Nebula. This is part of a stellar nursery, which is in our own galaxy. It's a very small part of our own galaxy. We haven't even talked about the rest of the galaxies. We haven't talked about our whole galaxy yet. We haven't talked about the stars that exist in the intergalactic space that are as many as the ones that are making up the galaxies. Can you imagine that? We haven't talked about any of these things. Can you imagine how many oceans, how many waters, Reservoirs are in these places? Just read it. Okay. This is what science tells you. Here it has, you just scroll down, and then it goes, beta pectoris, and here it tells you, okay, again, water molecules are abundant in planetary system forming around other stars. Can you imagine the amount of water? If they were ink and that's not finished, seven times that. God's words will never run out. Okay? This knowledge was not available to other people. This knowledge is here today for us. And so we have to make sure that we also worship God to that extent that actually is worthy of being worshipped. Okay. Because we have these physical facts. And then you can scroll it here. Okay, here. It says, how did water arrive on earth? Vesta from Dawn, this is the Dawn spacecraft. And Vesta is one of the uh, two objects in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. It tells you about water there, okay? Oceans on Earth, obviously we know about that. Okay, Jason topic sea, surface. Again, more Earth stuff. Venus, okay? Oceans lost. All evaporated. Okay. Mars used to be a, a, a wet planet. 
Now it's barren, so it looks like this. Okay, but still there is water there. Jupiter's moon, Europa, full of oceans underneath the ice. Ganymede, Jupiter, another, another moon of Jupiter. Callisto, another moon. Saturn's moon, Enceladus. Saturn moon's Titan. Saturn moon's Mimus. Mimus, sorry. Okay. Neptune's moon, Titan. Dwarf planet Pluto, all have water. Okay, and this is only one solar system. That's how we should think. When we are reading those verses, that's how we should think. And that's how we should extol God. Okay, and think about it. Think about all of those words that God has taught his creation. When he told, when he when he told the, the vacuum and matter come into existence willingly or unwillingly, they said we come willingly. What language were they speaking? Do you know? Do you have any clue? What was the language of Adam? Did he speak English? We don't know that. This is who God is. And this is, we in return, what we have to do, we have to do this meaning to worship God. And again, as I said, every time our knowledge goes up according to God's will, according to His, to His wisdom, Okay, that he gives us that knowledge. Okay. People don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear this stuff. Okay. These are tales from the past. No, my friend, these are physical facts. These are scientific facts. These, these are mathematical facts. And they are not going to let you go. You can turn your backs at these things. Okay, what Jonah did. Jonah, God says, Jonah, he joined the losers. If we don't watch it, we are going to join the losers. The people who have no idea what is going on. They are in darkness. They are in hopelessness. Stop them, I'm telling you, gives you hope all the time. And then God says in the Quran, okay, he tells us, he said that, he says that he made water the prerequisite of all things, all living things. That's what God says. Okay. So if I go back to the Quran, and I go to chapter 21, verse 30, Do those who disbelieve not realize that indeed the vacuum and matter were a single entity and we separated them and we rendered water to the prerequisite of every living thing? Do they then not believe? So with this much water, can you imagine how many living things live in this universe that God has created? And our hubris and our own Ego is telling us otherwise, that we are here and there's nothing else. Okay. So, my friends, God creates. He is the creator. He creates what you and I do not know. Can you imagine this according to this verse? We rendered water the prerequisite of all living things. Can you saw how much water is in this, in this corner of the uh, universe that we live in? A very small place. Okay. You go far enough, okay. the entire 
clusters of galaxies are like dots, super clusters, not just clusters, super clusters of galaxies. Okay, we are in the so-called Virgo supercluster, and it looks like a dot. That's how big the universe is, and it's expanding. So again, let's thank God for this for this huge blessing that He's given us today. So I'm going to stop here and finish this unit. Allah Kabir.